Hello world, Stephen Michael Zach here, and today we're going to be doing something a little different on the channel. We are going to be talking about my back walls here, and we are going to be adding an addition onto them to actually make it larger. Uh, because right now, as you can see, this thing is really small. One of the reasons I hung the curtains is so that you didn't see the gray screen behind it. So, <laughs> we will be making an addition. So first, let's take a look at the wall. Okay, so here is the original build for the wall. And as you can see, this thing was made kind of, I was really just experimenting. Now, basically what I did was I went to Granger and for $25, I got five of these four by eight pieces of cardboard. And I built a frame using uh, one by twos. And I put a little frame here as well, uh, a bar going across the back so it wouldn't sag. And uh, I used some kind of glue, some kind of industrial like cock glue. I don't even remember. I, I needed to use a, a caulking gun. Uh, I don't even remember what I used. Uh, and then I ended up on the front uh, putting in these tiny screws. And then I just added those hooks at the top. Uh, you probably can't see them. We'll insert a shot here so you can see them. But as you can see, I had a lot of problems getting this wood home. Uh, I basically put this on my roof rack and it just folded in half. It was a very windy day. So I ended up folding it up like a taco and shoving it in the back of my car. So a lot of these got damaged. And that is basically the, that's the basic construction of it. And then I used those two coat hooks, those two uh, hanger coat hooks uh, up there. I used those coat hooks I found on Amazon. So that's basically the back construction of the wall. Um, it's pretty flimsy. I probably should have braced it uh, with corner braces, you know, something going diagonally across here and diagonally across each end for a little bit more support. Let's swing this around, take a look at the front. So around front, I basically bought these tiles. They were very expensive uh, and I ended up Velcroing them on uh, and the Velcro is somewhat holding. Some of them have already fallen off. Uh, they've kind of shifted. There's big uh, gaps here. So Velcro, not a great idea. Um, it's holding, but some of them occasionally fall off and I have to re -vel I have to just stick them right back on. Uh, but I did end up driving uh, screws, little tiny screws through the cardboard into the wood. Now the problem with using screws in cardboard is if you go too far, the cardboard just rips. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. And that's it. That is the basic construction of the wall. So let's talk about the build materials. Now, first off, I found something different. Other than using those very large, hard to get home pieces of cardboard, I went into my local craft store and found this. This is corrugated plastic. Now, I have these all over my shelves protecting my gear. Um, they're great for shelf lining and things like that. And I figured out that three of these actually are going to be enough to do a single section, one there, one there, one at the bottom. Uh, in fact, we're gonna have to cut the bottom one off, uh, but these work perfectly. They're very, very lightweight, and I think it's just gonna work better than using the cardboard, because when I tried to put screws in the cardboard, it just tore and ripped, whereas this will most likely just crush and uh, you should be fine with this. So we are going to use corrugated plastic. And I also think that uh, this is going to be a lot lighter uh, than those heavy pieces of four by eight cardboard. Next, we're going to be using the leftover tiles. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint these or not or keep them white. I have to see how it looks on camera, uh, but we're gonna be making that decision. And these are going to be uh, fastened onto the corrugated Cardboard. And to attach the tiles, I'm going to be using this. This is called Scotch Fastener. Now, this is much better than Velcro. It sticks to itself. Uh, it's kind of got this kind of plasticky texture. And when you fold it over, it just locks into itself. I think the tiles are gonna be a heck of a lot more secure with this rather than the Velcro, which has proven time and time again, uh, it has fallen off. So definitely using Scotch Fasteners. To build the frame, we are going to use one by twos. Now, uh, I spent a little bit more money and I went with the treated wood, uh, not the one, not the really garbagey one with all the knots. And what you want to do when you're looking for a piece of wood is you want to stare down the barrel to see if it's straight on all sides and any sides that are curved or, or kind of warped, you want to cut off. Now, we have this cut to 90 uh, because that is the height in here, that of the other two. 
and then I will make a couple of shorter cross braces and a middle brace. And I may even add uh, some kind of braces in the corners as well, but uh, gonna put this together and see how it goes. Next, instead of using the industrial uh, glue that I used, we are going to try to use Gorilla Glue. I have been using this for a while now. I'm very impressed of how strong this is. I'm actually using it on my Aperture Case build, which uh, will hopefully be up soon. Hopefully I'll be done with it soon. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and use a lot of Gorilla Glue, and we are also going to use some screws as well. First thing I did was to lay out the corrugated plastic and trace out where the tiles would end. As you can see, the plastic is a little wider than the tiles, so we'll have to trim some off. Next, I placed down a piece of foam as not to cut into the rug on my floor. Lining everything up and using an angle square to make sure everything was lined properly, I drew my cut marks and used a box cutter and a scissors to trim away the plastic. Then I proceeded to use the scotch fasteners to secure the tiles. Now I am using one long one down the center and two small ones on the side. I strongly recommend not adding the ones on the sides and just using the one down the center. This will make adjusting the tiles easier in the long run. One down the center is also enough to hold the tile since you are using scotch fastener, which is stronger than Velcro. Now normally I would recommend that you start by building the frame with the plastic glued and screwed first and then laying the tiles, but I like to make things harder on myself as you'll see in a bit. I decided to use some black gaff tape to make a cohesive wall and to add some extra support when flipping this over to add my frame. I carefully laid down the tiles, making sure that all the edges were even. As I got to the bottom, I realized that the tiles were a little longer than my plastic, so I carefully cut the tiles to where I needed it to be. Now be very careful when doing this, as the tile is a hard plastic and splits and cracks very easily. You may want to use some blue painter's tape to prevent the cracking. Just go slow with this. And then I finished off the sharp edge with a few layers of black gaff tape so I wouldn't cut my feet or scratch my floor when moving the wall. My next step was to flip the whole thing over and add the frame I had cut. Now, I'm not gonna give you exact measurements as your wall's height may be different. Uh, in my room, the long part of the frame is about 90 inches. Making sure all was lined up properly, I then proceeded to use Gorilla Glue. Now, this will work just fine for my purposes. You may wanna use something a little more powerful, like some kind of industrial glue, but this is what I had on hand. Making sure everything stayed square, I glued the frame and weighed it down and went to sleep. The next morning, I flipped the wall over and began to remove the tiles to add some tack screws. Now, here's where building the frame and the wall first probably would have come in handy, but I do like to make things harder on myself. Also, using one strip of scotch fastener down the center would have also helped in removing the tiles. So, with that, I added some support screws and some hooks at the top, and now the wall was ready for hanging. So as I hung the wall, I noticed that the lines of the tiles didn't match up exactly. So being able to remove the tiles because of the scotch fastener was a plus. Again, I would just use one strip down the center because having the two strips on the side made it a little bit difficult to pop the tiles off. I repositioned all the tiles and then the work was done. So that's it. That is the wall behind me. That is the extension that I built. Now, I think I'm gonna keep this white. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna paint it blue like the rest of the wall. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Also, let me know if you've enjoyed this build video and if you want me to make more and build more really cool stuff for the studio. Other than that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to mash the bell button to be notified when we drop a brand new video. And feel free to use the links below as it helps out the channel. I'm Steven Michael Zach, and this, is new to me.